Hi guys, it's uh, Jax here again, and uh, welcome to part three of uh, the Phoenix TK11 uh, flashlight review. Um, now this is probably the lo this might be the longest review on YouTube of a flashlight, uh, and if you stuck it out for the first uh, two and you're here for the third, uh, this one I'm going to be doing the uh, beam outdoor dark uh, darkness beam shots. Um, but the reason I'm inside right now. Uh, is because I'm finishing off telling you all the information that I didn't get in the first two uh, videos. So if you're still with me, that's incredible and, and that's great. So uh, so what I didn't tell you in the first two videos is how, how uh, the light operates and I didn't show you how to access the modes. I also didn't uh, show you um, the accessories that come with the light and, tell you, and I didn't tell you about the run times and stuff like that. So I'll do that now and then I'll take you outside and I'll show you uh, beam shots. Uh, in the dark. So, anyways, I went and stuck a belt on uh, to show you um, the holster that the light comes with. Um, so, anyways, uh, in the package you'll get the light itself, a nylon uh, holster, a lanyard, spare O-rings, and a spare uh, switch cover boot. You'll get the registration warranty card and um, a user's manual, and that's all you'll get with the light. Um, so, having said that, I went and installed uh, on my belt, I went and put a belt on and put the, uh, the uh, nylon holster, which is a Velcro flip top, um, and it has uh, three attachment points. It has um, a Velcro loop for quick attachment for your uh, belt or backpack or bag. It has a sewed on uh, attachment point for more strength that you can feed a belt or a, uh, some sort of... Uh, uh, tie down through so it's sewed on and then the third access point is a, a carabiner um, uh, Access thing so you can uh, again attach it to your duffel bag uh, service bag or uh, naps uh, Back sack or whatever, but um, so those are the three options and I'll show you how it uh, how small it is and how uh, well first of all So there's the size there's my hand and it's easy to chuck it in your pocket now. This is important uh, because um you know, uh, this light puts out more power than this light, uh, and try to carry this light in your pocket. It uh, just wants to fall and stuff like that. And this is stuff I noticed uh, from actually trying to carry a big mag light in the dark down a road. Uh, it's just, you know, different size and different all that. So, anyways, it throws into your breast pocket easily. If you had a, if you were a guy that wore a suit, it would probably, uh, you know. You could probably carry this light. So relatively painless and easy. It, uh, I think it weighs 150 grams or something like that. If I'm, unless I'm mistaken. Very light. You can just chuck it into your pocket and uh, no problems. So yeah. Also, it's uh, small enough that you can throw it into your pocket. A little bit bulkier than many people like, but uh, you still could carry it that way. Throw it in your back pocket if you don't mind. Let me see. It doesn't feel all that bad if you didn't mind feeling a little bit of something back there, but. Uh, so anyways, I'll go and stick that up back on my belt quickly with the quick attachment point. Um, so here I am. I want to show you uh, also while I'm here uh, about the uh, EDC ability of this light. So here it ha I have it on my belt. I could wear it here for uh, quick access or I could slide it back here where it's comfortable. So it's hidden, it's concealed, uh, and it's relatively painless to carry. And if you jump in your car, you just want to slide it, uh, slide it uh, forward or something like that, so it's not uh, jabbing you in the back. But the, so there's the holster. So uh, if you look at me right now, I'm kind of wearing, uh, you know, nothing heavy or bulky. But on my person, I have the two, uh, 258 lumen light. I got my smaller everyday carry light here, my Robinson, clipped onto these carpenter jeans. Um, in my pocket, I have two 18650 spare batteries. Uh, clipped on this side, I got my Spyderco Dragonfly, which is a small uh, everyday carry type of knife. And um, we'll clip that back in here. And in this pocket, I have um, I got my uh, bigger everyday carry uh, knife, the Bally Saw. And uh, so. I don't know if you would know that by looking at me. So I guess the reason I'm mentioning this is uh, to show you the, uh, the carry capability of this light. 
And uh, the reason I had uh, two 18650s batteries in my pocket is to tell you about the uh, run times on this. So we'll go ahead and we'll pull the light out of the holster. Okay, so like I told you in the first two videos, uh, this is a two mode light. Um, so the mode access is easy and simple and uh, hopefully really reliable and robust. So anyways, you go and you turn the light on by uh, pressing the switch. And uh, to access the two modes, you simply turn the head counterclockwise. Uh, so anyways, fully tightened, fully tightened, uh, the head is in turbo. When it's fully tightened, uh, when you turn the light on and off, as long as the head's fully tightened, it'll come on in uh, turbo. Now, if you grab the head and rotate it just a bit counter, uh, sorry, clockwise, it'll go into the uh, low, lower mode, which is uh, 48 lumens, um, which is, uh, by the way, uh, plenty bright for um, for most uh, everyday uh, applications. You can go down into your base, dark basement uh, with 48 lumens. You can look under the hood of your car. You can walk down a forest trail. You could uh, use it if there's a power outage. And this is important because. Uh, the whole point of this is that you can do a lot with those 48 lumens and uh, it might surprise you how bright it is. Especially with the bigger head and the deeper reflector, this thing still has throw with 42 lumens where, um, you know, this light if it had a 42 uh, lumen mode wouldn't have throw because it's such a small head. But these lights here, these big turbo head ones, uh, even in their lowest modes, uh, like this one at least, it has throw and it will still chuck the beam you know 50 meters out there this one won't do that on its lowest uh, it won't do that if it had uh, 48 lumens um, it does it because it has like 280 lumens or whatever but uh, so uh, keep that in mind uh, the low is really handy now the, the important thing about this is that the low mode gives you good uh, usability and is enough to walk in a in a forest trail and these are some pretty uh, heavy duty forests out here uh, in Ontario so um, Keep that in mind, and if you ever need more power, you just crank it up and run it full tilt. But so, anyways, in low mode here, I'll put it back in low mode. Uh, you get. Um, I wrote this down. I did a little research here. Uh, so in low mode, you get uh, 12 hours of continual runtime, which is excellent runtime. This is, I think, uh, I'm not sure if that's with CR123s or 18650s, um, but 12 hours uh, of continuous runtime before uh, the light will uh, uh, run out of juice. Uh, that's really good runtime. I mean, you know, that's half a day of all, always using it. If you were camping or something and you only used it five minutes at a time every, you know, half an hour, it would last for who knows how many days. But it's nice to know that you got 12 hours. It'll get you through a whole night on one battery. Now, you go and, oh, uh, okay, so anyways, uh, so again, and uh, depending on uh, where you left the head, the light will come on in that mode. If you left it loose, it'll come on in low. And if you left it tight it'll come on and high so it'll it'll retain that mode until you tighten or loosen it um high is uh 258 lumens like i said for uh two hours and 42 minutes so almost three hours uh which is really good run times again good performance because of that uh because of the good uh, uh circuitry and the, and the uh efficient uh xpg emitter in there so this is good um now the reason I had two 18650s in my pocket and one load it in the light is to show you how uh, you could take off uh, and go uh, camping or fishing and uh, how, how painless it is to carry a few 18650s. Now, I have three 18650s on me, one in the light, two in my pocket. Now, on, now that means I have, um, if I was to use this light only on high mode and use it continuously without shutting it off, letting it go for hours and hours, because I had those two batteries and the one in the light, I get eight hours and six minutes of uh, constant full brightness. So that's a pretty good solution uh, for um, for uh, usage. Uh, for usage, if you were heading off on a, you know, it's good. It's really good. Uh, now, if I was to turn it into low mode and still have my three batteries on me, uh, we're looking at. Um, oh, uh, sorry, I might have screwed up here. Uh, so with three batteries, eight hours and six minutes on high. Okay. Oh yeah. Or or uh, thirty six hours of continual use on low. Now that's really good run time with just three batteries on you. Thirty six on so on low with the forty eight lumen mode, thirty six hours of runtime if you had three eighteen six fifties, one in the light, two in your pocket. You know. 
Uh, so that's that's really good. That's a day and a half or whatever, and uh, that's pretty good, uh, you know. Um, or like three full nights in the bush uh, with those three batteries. But uh, so, but uh, so I don't confuse you. Two hours and forty-two minutes with one battery on high, or twelve hours on low uh, on the low mode. And these all go up. So uh, the whole point is to show you how easy it is to uh, to uh, incorporate it into your everyday carry on your person. So uh, without further ado, I guess we'll go outside. And day is starting to break. Um, it's like seven in the morning or something like that. Uh, so we will take these. Uh, we'll take the the uh, light out and do the beam shots. Uh, oh yeah, and another thing I wanted to tell you uh, quickly is that. Um, uh, you might want to do some uh, research, but I also bumped into some, some information online that said uh, you could use two, two uh, RCR123 3.7 volt rechargeable lithium ion cells in this light. Now, I've heard people say that you can and you can't, and the reason this is important because is the voltage. Uh, you know, two uh, RCR123s at full charge is 8.2 volts. Apparently, you can use it, be but the reason I'm mentioning this is before you go chucking um, two RCR 123s in there, which is the rechargeable version of the CR 123A 3 volt disposable lithium ion battery, uh, just uh, do your research to make sure I'm not wrong because some lights have voltage limits and you don't want to blow up your light. Anyways, um, it's, it's really, there's probably not a lot of benefit in putting two RCRs in there anyway because uh, they have low milliamps and uh, they'll run out way quicker. So it's best just to stick with what they suggest which is the 18650 or the two CR123 batteries. Okay, we're taking this outside with a few other flashlights to give you a comparison. Um, we're going to take out the big uh, uh, 3D mag but it happens to have four C cells and an overdriven um, xenon bulb so it's going to be brighter than a stock 3d mag so we're going to head her outside now okay and i tried to do this when it was uh fully dark out but uh the battery ran out on the camera oops there's a deer running away there see you can't see it but if i pull out the phoenix oh hell where's the phoenix there's a deer there but the mag light couldn't see it on the camera but if i have the phoenix out there she is right there. Hi. Sorry, I'm probably hurting her eyes. So uh, bear with me while I walk down to an area where I could show you uh, beam shots of this light. Okay, so I'm just going to walk down. Day is starting to break here. Sorry about the movement. I did try to take this in the pitch dark, but the uh, daylight snuck up on me because of my damn uh, camera battery. So we're taking this down to the lake. And here we are, morning slowly coming. I got the mag light on full focus, and uh, here it is, poking around. Does a pretty good job reaching out to the point over there. Here it is in the in the immediate area beside me, and I'm going to tighten the head uh, so that it's kind of you can see the throw, uh, full spill mode. So, anyways, uh, here's the beam shot for the mag light. Okay, not too bad, pretty good. So we're going to tighten it back up. So anyways, um, there's my neighbor's cabin's proper, uh, neighbor's property over there shining on the cabin. Okay, so that's the comparison. There's my boat, uh, you know, down the decks. Okay, now I'm going to put the big bag, bag light down. And here's uh, the Phoenix on maximum. Okay, there's the, uh, my, my neighbor's cabin, the shoreline. There's the uh, lake down there. Coming up here, here's the area. There's the uh, nice uh, beam profile shining under the deck. Lighting up the cabin over there. And uh, so, nice smooth beam profile because of the uh, orange peel textured uh, aluminum reflector. Some of these come in smooth reflectors and note those ones, uh, if I'm not mistaken, will throw better. So, uh, hang on a sec, I'm going to take you down here. I'm going to show you what the low mode looks like. This is low mode. As you can see, it still has a good output. still has good throw. That's almost completely dark under this uh, little dock thing here. This is low mode. Okay, I'll swap it onto turbo. You see how much light this thing puts out. It's just awesome. 
I should have uh, hope I should have got this when it was uh, completely dark out. So I'm sorry for that, guys. There it is, lighting up my dock. And here's me throwing my light into the water. Okay. There. There's the IP IPX8 waterproofness. We'll plunk it down there just uh, to show you that that's uh, a real deal. There's that underwater beam, which is kind of neat. The water is freezing right now. God, it's cold. And uh, so there's, uh, there's a bit of the beam shot, just that nice high intensity beam with a good throw. It's lighting up uh, the back of a motor home way over there. See, if this was night, there's a deer in there. See the eyes reflecting off the deer in that yard? Deer right there. There's my boat. Uh, so, sorry about that guys, I wish I would have got this in the pitch darkness, so bear with me and I might try to find a, uh, a darker, a darker spot here. So here we are under the deck. I put on the 3D mag light again. Uh, there it is. Shining around under the deck. Okay. Under the other house. Now for comparison, here's the uh, Phoenix TK11. Okay, throwing way the hell over to the, the piles under the other house over there. Here's the beam shot. Nice uh, spill and nice uh, bright hot spot. So uh, maybe we'll uh, hold the camera and do a side by side with the uh, mag. So we go closer up so you can see that the mag is on. So flick the mag light off and uh, there's another deer over there I wonder if I can catch his, his eyes okay maybe not there's another uh, deers are out feeding right now okay so uh, once again it's dark under here there it is and here it is on low to show you that solid performance and throw low is just awesome 12 hours of that the spill on the low shines under that other house and then turbo so it's pretty awesome I'm gonna shine it on the garage pardon me for walking here and screwing up with the camera oh, okay well maybe not okay anyways I'm gonna go back inside so uh, hang on guys, I'm going to flick the, uh, here we are doing uh, the mag light inside the house. And if you point the light at the uh, ceiling, a white ceiling, the amount of light that bounces back and lights up the area is called a, 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 a bounce test, a ceiling bounce test. So this is what it is on Max, looking around with the uh, mag light. Now, here it is with the Phoenix. That's a, uh, kind of tells you what kind of lumens it's putting out. That's just from pointing it at the white ceiling. Here's the Phoenix inside. Pointing around. There's a welder. There's the beam. Uh, d completely dark. Uh, it's dark in these rooms. This unfinished bathroom here. Okay. Um, like before, there's the beam shot on the ceiling. Nice, uh, nice spill. Nice hot spot. So, uh, yeah, I'm sorry about that. I wish I would have got this in the complete um, darkness. So I'll take this upstairs where it is dark. And this is what the camera is seeing is dark. And here's the Phoenix on maximum pointing around up here. As you can tell, this is an unfinished cabin, guys. So I'm going to put it on low. See how useful that is around your around your house and stuff like that? Now to illustrate what I mean by uh well maybe I don't have time for that, so this is the third video and we're here's uh here's low down the stairs and then here's uh high down the stairs. So um this light really comes into its own uh when you're out there and you're walking uh and you got a small light and then you flick this thing on and you see how many more meters uh, the throw is. So, all right, so uh, hopefully I didn't forget anything. I mean, that's a, that's a uh, three videos at uh, 20, 
25 minutes a piece almost. You could have watched a movie in the time that you spent with me, but you know what? If you're uh, shopping for this light, this is, uh, you know, an indispensable um, video if you're in the market for a, for a tactical flashlight. Um, so anyways, that's uh, my review of the Phoenix, uh, the Phoenix TK11 uh, with the Cree XPG R5 and the smooth reflector. Note that it comes, or sorry, the orange peel reflector. And please note when you're shopping for this, if you are, uh, this light used to be, uh, I'm Canadian and I paid uh, almost $100 for this light two years ago. Now this light has come down in price and I see it online for uh, $69 um, in the version I have. So now uh, that's uh, pretty good value and uh, you saw me throw it in the water there. Um, you know, so uh, there you go. Um, and it's already almost, it's dry almost. Uh, so a good looking little light. I mean, what a good looking little light. There it is compared to my hand. I showed you that. but. Uh, Okay, guys, uh, hopefully I covered everything. If, if uh, any of my viewers actually followed me through these uh, full three videos, thanks for, uh, thanks for sticking around. I appreciate that. So from uh, me, uh, Jax, and the Phoenix TK11, we say adios. Thanks for watching.